We're only one week in to the Big 12 basketball season, and I already have no idea what the hell is going to happen. So we need Matthew Postens on Heartland College Sports to come in and figure this thing out. I'm Pete Mundo. Thanks for joining us on YouTube and on the podcast. Hit the subscribe button. You know what to do if you love Big 12 sports, Big 12 basketball. We will have you covered these next couple of months. Uh, Leave that five star on the podcast as well. So. We have seen Matthew now this week. Uh, Kansas almost go down on Saturday to TCU. Then they lose at UCF after leading by 16 in the first half. Houston loses to Iowa State. I don't know what to say outside of, I guess this is exactly what we thought the Big 12 was going to be like this year, right? Well, I I think we knew it was going to be a gauntlet. Um, The gauntlet started right away. Like nobody got a a soft landing. I mean, Baylor's 2-0, but they needed overtime to beat Oklahoma State on Saturday, uh, Texas Tech. Texas Tech might look like the most impressive team after two games along with Kansas State just because of the way they were able to beat their first two opponents. But, you know, it's this is the Big 12. I mean, it's like Jalen Bridges said after their win uh, over BYU on Tuesday night. You know, it's the Big 12, right? I mean, that's what this is. It's a it's a big game every night. It doesn't matter if you're perceived to be one of the worst teams in the conference like UCF, I think, was before they went over Kansas on Tuesday. If you can find a way to play well that night, you have a chance to win. And, you know, between that upset, between Iowa State, you know, beating Houston and Hilton and, uh, you know, just in the games last night, too, um, you know, TCU taking care of Oklahoma at home. It, it's it's already been a topsy-turvy season and we're only two games into it. Yeah, that is um, exactly right. So like I look at the KU UCF game and I know Bill Self says now that Hunter Dickinson's dealing with some knee injury that no one was aware of until after the game on uh, Wednesday night. Yeah. But the big man for UCF Diallo, I mean, having a guy at 6'10 with that wingspan, he did throw Hunter a little off his game or at least enough off his game, especially down the stretch. And to me, that was a big difference in UCF making that comeback because Kansas's offense was not operating like what we're used to seeing out of Kansas. So is that cause for concern? Is there a hole now in Kansas's game that teams can exploit? Or is this UCF has a big dude who can slow down Hunter Dickinson and there's not many of those guys? Uh, there are not many of those guys, uh, if we're being honest. I, I think the, the thing that really stuck out with me in terms of Kansas in that game in the second half was I really felt like they took their foot off the gas. If we're just yeah. being honest, I mean, they were up 16 late in the first, they, they came out and I think, I don't, they, I don't think they got complacent, but I think they took their foot off the gas a little bit. And I think the way UCF adjusted their defense going to the zone, that's what you're trying to do when you run a zone against a team like Kansas is you're trying to get them to be passive and they kind of played into it. And that's part of how UCF was able to get into the game. And when you when you get passive offensively, you go to your bread and butter, which is Hunter Dickinson. And if you have a guy like Diallo in the pivot, you at least have the opportunity to slow him down a little bit. You at least have the chance to make his life more difficult. And that's what he did on, uh, on uh, Wednesday night. He just made Hunter Dickinson's life difficult enough for them to help win that game. I'm not too worried about them long-term, Kansas just because they have too many weapons and, and too many players that can can hurt you. And they're such a great passing team that most nights they'll be o- able to overcome that kind of thing. But when you, when you factor in the fact that UCF ran the zone at them, made them passive, they were playing in an extremely hostile environment at that arena last night, big 12 type of environment. And the fact that, you know, apparently Hunter Dickinson is injured a little bit, which we didn't know about, like you said. I think those things all conspired to to help Kansas lose that game. Yeah. Now, uh, TCU is a controversial call away, arguably, from being 2-0 and in the conference, whereas KU is a controversial play away from being 0-2 in the conference. <laughs> TCU beats Oklahoma. That's a top 10 win on yep. Wednesday night. They almost picked off, of course, top five Kansas. What has Jamie Dixon got going down there in Fort Worth, which is a start that I would say not a lot of us saw coming? Yeah, I think we've kind of reached the point with TCU where this is the expectation rather than this is the surprise. And and here's why. TCU's won 35 games against top 25 teams in their entire history as a program. Jamie Dixon has 20 of those wins. Wow. He has built TCU 
beyond what he was as a player in the late 80s when he helped take help get them into the NCAA tournament, which was their high watermark until he rejoined them as the head coach. They've got a really intriguing team because they've got a lot of athletes out on the wing, along with Emmanuel Miller, Avery Anderson III, uh, Nelson. Uh, they've got some really good height inside. It's a little bit more mobile than what they had with Eddie Lampkin last year. You know, Lampkin was a really good, you know, kind of anchor post inside. They've got big guys in there now that can kind of move around a little bit more, and they, it gives them more options in terms of what they can run offensively. And defensively, they've just become one of the best teams in the conference. They turned over Oklahoma to the point where they scored 20 points off turnovers in the first half of that game. They really set the tone defensively. And because they play so quickly, if they start turning you over on defense and turning them into points on the other side of the floor, it becomes really hard to keep up with them. Oklahoma did it for a half, but really as that game went on in the second half, the way TCU played defense, the way they were able to, to stifle McCollum and some of the other players in that team that are, are big time for them in terms of points like Otega Owe, uh, the further they just pulled away. They're, they're a team that's going to be dangerous in this conference. I don't know that they're a team that's going to win the conference, but when you think about the first four seeds, when you think about the teams that are going to get the double buy in the tournament in March in Kansas City, TCU's got to be a team you think about as being one of those teams that could get one of those double buys. Yeah, they certainly seem capable of that. So, uh Let's go to Houston. You know, uh, we knew this was not going to be a year where Houston goes 33 and four. It's not the mm -hmm. AAC, uh, but they got their first loss on Tuesday and it was at Iowa state. And listen, I don't blame TJ Otzelberger for saying, Hey, uh, we're not going to be an underdog here at Hilton, especially against a team that's coming from the AAC. Not that Houston's not a great program, but I get what he was saying there. Yeah. I think he was also making a statement on behalf of the big 12 to Houston in this game as well. Uh, do you think there was some of those mind games going on? And and if so, what does that mean for Houston the rest of the season? Uh, mind games, I don't know. I mean, Iowa State was kind of desperate coming into this game. They lost their opener at yeah. Oklahoma. So they they needed to win. They did not want not want to end up in a situation where they started Big 12 play 0-2. And, and we all know what Hilton's like. It, the atmosphere is there incredible. More importantly, Kelvin Sampson knows what Hilton's like because he coached at Oklahoma for yeah. six, seven years. So that was no surprise to him. But I think it was a surprise to everybody else in that team that wasn't LJ Cryer, who played at Baylor for three years. I think this was sort of their, hi, we're in the Big 12, and every time we go on the road, it's not going to be East Carolina. <laughs> it's going to be yeah. Iowa State. It's going to be Texas. It's going to be um, Baylor. It's going to be a big-time atmosphere. So you know, Houston probably needed this. And as poorly as they played, they could have won. I mean, they were down 14 at one point. LJ Cryer scored just five points. They were in the lead with the final minute of the game. They had crawled back into that game. And that's exactly what Big 12 teams do. You know, when they get knocked down, you saw UCF. They were down 16 at one point. These are Big 12 teams now. And when Big 12 teams get knocked down early in a the game, they get back up. And I, the resiliency of Houston is what I really liked in watching that game Tuesday night. I think the loss is ultimately going to help them calibrate on the road down the line. I think it's going to help them build and cultivate an even better home court advantage. I'm not down on them at all as far as being a contender in this conference, but I think they learned how hard it's going to be to win games on the road in this league. Yeah, I, 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 that's exactly right. Well, I was talking about it um, by myself, to myself, on the show the other day. Do you think 13 and five gets it done to win the regular season in this conference? Because I do. That that would be, I think that would be the floor, honestly. Okay. I, I think Kansas. You, you think, think someone think, can get to 15 and three, 14 and I, four? I think Kansas is capable of doing it. I think Baylor's capable of doing it. Um, I'm not certain Houston's capable of doing it you know, the way I thought they were yeah. uh, when we started the season. You know, I, I think that would be, I, I say the floor. I think that's probably the ceiling. Uh, I, I Maybe oh, somebody go, okay. maybe somebody goes 14 and four. Okay. But it's so hard early on. We've only played two games and we've seen Kansas lose. We've seen Houston lose. We've seen BYU lose two games. We, we Texas nearly lost their first road game. Yep. I mean, there's so much parody that, you want to sit there and say that maybe this is the year the conference winner has four or five losses, but I think we need to see a couple more weeks and see where, you know, 
right now, Baylor, Kansas State, and Texas Tech all have the advantage because they've won their first two games. Yeah. I think one can make the argument that Kansas State hasn't really played like the upper echelon of the conference yet. Texas Tech got a nice win at Texas. Baylor beat BYU the other night at home. They're going to get Cincinnati on Saturday. I want to see where we're at in a couple of weeks because, you know, we could have a team that conceivably might be might might be five or six and zero oh in a couple of weeks, and maybe that's a team that could go fourteen and four or fifteen and three. Yeah. But I think it's going to be tough. It's not going to be like a seventeen and one or an eighteen and two, or a sixteen and two champion like it no. has been the past couple of years. It's not going to be like that this year. There's too much parity in this conference from the leftover schools, from the ten schools that are holding over, and I think the four schools have already proven they're going to be competitive. Yeah. So uh, Saturday, everyone's going to circle the top ten matchup: Oklahoma, Kansas. But there are two games to me that are almost more intriguing. Houston TCU suddenly becomes a great game. You're going to be there, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, right. You know, I mean, we know TCU could be two and zero. Houston's coming off a loss. How do they respond on the road in Big Twelve play? And then a, a team that you just referenced, two teams you just referenced, Kansas State and Texas Tech. I mean, Kansas State's off to a two and zero start. So is Texas Tech. But I think we're both kind of taking a wait and see approach with both of those programs. With the winner on Saturday feeling much better than the loser. So what do you think? To me, we can all look at the top 10 matchup and say that's the best game, but I look at those other two. What am I missing? I I don't think you're missing anything. I think those are the three most intriguing games of the day. I mean, for for Houston, they need a bounce back game and they're going to have to go on the road to do it. I'm really interested to see what the environment's going to be like at TCU because students should be coming back late this week, early next week. Um, I, I think you could have a really great atmosphere in there. It's like a 5 p.m. game, so it's going to be an, an evening game. Um, Kansas State, Texas Tech, like you said, winner's 3-0. and Winner's in really good shape. And that would be a big game for Kansas State to win yep. because you know they've got a really difficult stretch coming up. And they're still waiting for Quest Glover you know, to, to come back or to find out when he's going to come back. But the fact – that you know, if they can emerge from this stretch three and zero without him. That's a big deal to them. It's a big deal to Texas Tech because they haven't had Devin Cambridge. They won't have him the rest of the year. Pop Isaacs has really, you know, come on this year. He's not just a jump shooter anymore. He's a guy that can go get his own shot, can draw fouls, make free throws, and the the collective group around him. They've really coalesced. I think quicker than I was expecting them to. I, I felt like Texas Tech was a team coming in. That was going to struggle a little bit because I think they lost their two, you know, most significant non-conference games. But they've come in, beat Texas on the road. They waylaid Oklahoma State at home. I think they shot nearly sixty percent in that game. Which, if you do that, you're probably going to win anyway. So I'm interested to see if there's any kind of letdown for Tech just after winning these first two games. Maybe, maybe defying their own expectations just a little bit. Um, I think that that game is going to be really interesting to watch. Yeah, it, it is going to be a heck of a lot of fun. Um, and we're to think we're only a week into this thing is just fascinating as well. And heck, you know, suddenly you got a hot UCF team that's feeling itself a little bit against a BYU team that looks like a paper tiger um, based on, you know, their top 20 ranking and now a uh, pretty convincing 0-2 start in league play. So yeah. we can go through all these games. Um uh, you know, Texas, West Virginia is probably the dud of the day. Oklahoma State, I mean, Mike Boynton desperately needs a win, but he's got to mm-hmm. go to Hilton Coliseum. And then you mentioned Cincinnati and Baylor having some intrigue as well. So, yeah, uh, Matthew, is this going to be the most fun we've had covering this conference here over the last several years? Or uh, I can't think of anything topping it. I just think this is fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I think I've been covering basketball now for you seven years now. And I think I think this might be the most balanced conference, you know, race we've ever had. I yeah. mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, coming in, we said Kansas is probably going to win, but Baylor's got the horses to do it. You know, I wouldn't rule out Houston just yet. Iowa State looks really interesting if they can get their three-point shooting going. Texas Tech and Kansas State have both really kind of surprised us early on. You know, Johnny Dawkins, they interviewed him after the game last night against Kansas, and you know, he kind of chuckled, and he said, yeah, you know, we got 16 more of these. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Almost as if to say, this is great. We beat Kansas at home. This is our second win against a top five team ever. But 
we got BYU on Saturday and that's going to be tough too. <laughs> I yeah. mean, it's just, you know, we talked about how there it's different this year because there's no double round Robin in yeah. the schedule. It's, but you're still not going to get a break. Honestly. I mean, maybe West Virginia becomes that one team in the conference that becomes that break. But once they get Jesse Edwards back, I think they can be competitive with anybody in the conference. I think that's the thing they're missing right now because they have Creesa, they have battle, they have outside shooters. They just don't have the guy they can rely on inside. So when Edwards comes back from that injury, which could be soon, they actually ruled him out an hour before their game uh, against Kansas state. Once he comes back, they could be competitive. I don't think they're, they're going to the postseason, but I think they could, they could mess with a lot of people in this conference, honestly. Yeah, no, I'm with you, man. I just, um, I, I am really enjoying this first week of hoops. You know, I was saying on the show earlier in the week that while you're in the basketball space 12 months a year, I'm just kind of getting back into the groove of basketball. And something about this year just kind of feels different, has a little more excitement to it. Maybe it's the new teams. Maybe it's having a team like Houston in the top five and seeing some of these matchups for the first time. But it's just been a hell of a lot of fun. So I, I can't wait. And we got two months mm -hmm. left of it till the big 12 tournament. So it's... yeah, I, I think for somebody who turned off the national championship game on Monday night and just turned on basketball Tuesday and Wednesday and watched those games, they, they were probably like, what is happening? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, happening trust, right now? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. So man, it's, it's going to be fun. Um, people should be reading your stuff, obviously on heartland college sports.com signing up for our, message boards as well. Those are free. And I'll do this quick plug as well, because I just was looking at the schedule here on my phone and OU Kansas on ESPN plus BYU UCF ESPN plus Texas, West Virginia on ESPN plus. So in the uh, YouTube link and also in the podcast link, I will put a link to our sign up page for ESPN plus. If you don't have it yet, it's 1099 a month and you can cancel that at any time. So you can cancel it. Whenever you want at uh, 1099 a month and you can use our link, which will be in the description of this YouTube video and also of uh, the podcast. So Matthew, I'm looking forward to Saturday, man. It's going to be a great day. Absolutely. And I'll say one thing about ESPN plus, I know it's an expense. I know there are some fans that still grouse about the fact that there are some games on plus, but the thing is when you subscribe, you get everything at ESPN. It's everything. You get all the women's games, all the Olympic sports, all the ESPN plus stuff that's on all the other conferences. You get everything. It's not like you just get Big 12 stuff with that. More importantly, do you have Peacock for the Chiefs game on Saturday? I do not, and I don't know what I'm going to do about that yet. Well, I mean, uh, look look for Matthew at a sports bar <laughs> near you in uh, the Dallas area. Well, it won't matter. Actually, I'm going to be at the, the Houston TCU game. So. Oh, that's right. That's yeah, right. Yeah, I'm yeah, working. Well, so definitely don't look for him at a local sports bar. So yeah, that game tips off at 5 o'clock. So yeah, you'll, you'll, be, yeah, you'll be home around halftime, give or take. Yeah. All right. Good deal. Well, hey, man, um, we'll be looking for your stuff. You'll be at TCU Houston on Saturday, and we'll uh, do this again soon. All right. Sounds great. He's Matthew Postens. I'm Pete Mundo. Subscribe to the show, YouTube, and of course, uh, on the podcast as well. Hit that five star if you want the koozie. We'll hook you up with those as well. Send me a screenshot of that rating and review on iTunes to Pete Mundo, M-U-N-D-O at heartlandcollegesports.com. We'll talk to you soon. Enjoy the games.